practice. You practice to uh, adapt to the play style um, in other water rugby. The question was, um, how does the player manage to hold the breath like this? It's practicing, 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 more practicing. Okay, the first, uh, the Duisburg get the goal. Germany steal the goal. Um, Marion attack from the open side, but uh, could not deliver the ball to the uh, lady on the goal. Uh, so I think the worst thing what the Duisburg or uh, the ladies can do is to get into the cluster because yeah. that makes no sense. For Amaga, the, the best situation is uh, one player grabs the ball and keeps it in possession as long as possible so the others can breathe and um, yes. relax. And for Duisburg, the clear goal has to be uh, draw the game back to the, to the ground of the pool, uh, make Amaga dive, make Amaga, Amaga use the resources. Uh, get them um, into a fast-paced game, uh, pass uh, a lot of quick passes usually to uh, make the attackers tired. And that those are the situations where um, usually uh, you get those scoring opportunities as at the basket when the attackers can't uh, come down as quickly as they, as they should. Yeah, that so was yeah. an attacker from, from over the middle, over Heide, then Lisa. So... Yeah. So that now that they make a mistake, they go to the surface. This makes totally no sense. But going back, yeah. Monica has the ball with the number four. But they managed to get the ball down again. So they're getting it out. They're drawing it immediately to the ground. So it's a very good game for the Duisburg to keep a marker on the water, to keep a marker a marker on the pressure. Uh, and we're already seeing that the attackers of a marker are thinning out around the baskets. They're getting grips to the uh, uh, to the goalkeeper. But Amaga, on the other hand, are uh, very smart to always try to scrum the ball to, sur to the surface. Um, oh okay, it's a quick pass to the defender. That's usually pretty risky to pass the ball like this down with straight in front of the goal. Usually you try to get the player away from the basket. And now the goal is already empty and uh, yeah, the goalkeeper gets there pretty much the last second. But nice effort of the uh, Amaga uh, forwards to... Uh, carry the ball away, uh, fixate the ball uh, onto the German uh, girls there, um, trying to block them as far away from the basket as they can so the goalkeepers and defenders can basically just lay there on the water uh, without having direct pressure. And again, we see the German game plan very clear, get get a grip on the goalkeeper, they are lying there now quite some time uh, in their own half. They have to be defending the entire time. Now we see an empty basket. And and as if you're a mugger, you have to take the risk to leave the basket um, open for some. Oh, there's now there's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Mm. But very nicely defended by the goalkeeper to just uh, kick her away with the things. But again, another attack from Buff. But the Duisburg players are missing the the, the, uh, the passing stations um, under the basket. There's usually just one player attacking from the top, while the others are not being in position uh, on either left or the right side of the basket to receive a pass to have a quick scoring opportunity, especially if you know that the defenders and the attackers are turning right now. They're in position now. There's a nice grip on the goalkeeper. And the German woman has somewhat stolen the basket but apparently Amago got the ball out yeah they're at the ball out and now they're going for the, for the counter attack and it's an empty basket and they score oh my god thinking that that was the situation Amago was looking for the entire game get the ball out of their own half have a quick counter attack while the German women are on the defense uh, on the attack uh, they don't have a defender and a goalkeeper in place um, to stop the counter attack and then get the, the free play on the free basket that is basically what should not happen you should be aware of this if you're this group that this is the clear game plan of Magger and I think there's a timeout actually now by uh, this group no timeout white uh, so timeout white? Oh, yeah. timeout by Magger, yeah yeah so they uh, need time to breathe smart, now smart, smart attack yeah very good executed and uh, that was pretty much perfectly executed by the Danish they, they scrummed yes. the ball uh, they try to get it to the surface as often as possible so players can breathe 
now they use the timeout uh, to get some air back and now the game plan will be to get the ball and get into the German half and somehow stay there with the ball as long as possible pass it around make the Germans uh, stay in the defense and if they get out of, out of the defense to get the ball to have more people playing forward those are usually the opportunities you can take to get a one-on-one -on -one situation at the basket and score again but we'll see how, th how the game goes I mean it's still um, 25 minutes to go so there's enough time for uh, Germany to actually equalize uh, and get ahead yeah but this was uh, I think a big shock for, for the Duisburg I hope yeah. that uh, they learned out of this uh, but now the times of course yeah. on the Danish side because now Duisburg has to deliver so yeah. so it's at least to have to score once so it's, it's a question if can they can speed up uh, their the attack mode, uh, it's uh, of course con controlling the ball, but uh, the pressure gets now high. And uh, yeah. the high pressure, it's not good for a game, especially if you get a goal like this uh, especially yourself. If you, should, if you should be the favorite team actually to, to play a game. Yeah, if you play against seven, you have to, every team has to be uh, the favorite team, so... But uh, the, the Danish team and, and the all the, yes, the, the games well before, they, 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 they played very well. The defense, uh, if it's a function, it's very well, so there's not so much space. You have to really respect the defensive work by the Danish. The basket is very rarely open. Um, to The Duisburg team is trying to get the basket from the, German, uh, from the Danish team, but it's very rarely open to actually be snacked away by them. Um, they're getting their tags on the goalkeeper, but the forwards of the Danish, uh, now as you see it again, are trying to scrum the ball away, get them away from the goalkeepers, get them away from the defenders. Uh, okay, this foul called now by the referees. We'll see. Okay, it's against the Danish. So it's free throw against Amaga. So you really have to respect actually the stamina of the defenders and the goalkeepers to actually be in place all the time. Especially if the pressure is there, especially you see there again, the German women are trying to um, trying to uh, exchange with the uh, white goalkeepers here. They're trying to get, take the position, and that's actually something. You, if, you, if you're desperate, you should do it the entire time. You should pressure the defense as much as possible. Don't give them the opportunity to leave the basket. Don't give them the opportunity to go out and help the, the forwards uh, carry the ball into the opponent's half. Pressure them to the goal, but. Be safe at the same time. That's that's very important. Yeah, especially don't lose. And that is again they're going into the goalkeeper, uh, and then they, they get in the in the scrum, mm. which is of course uh, not very helpful for that mm. because this it did not increase the uh, the pressure to the goalkeeper. Yeah, it disturbed the attacking. So they are too focused, too close to and too narrow to the Danish yeah. goal, so they have to go out, out and in, yeah. but they just uh, try to, to get in on the first wave yeah. and then uh, yeah. it, the passing is too, too late, so the opportunity is coming too late. Uh, now Mario on, on, on the neck, neck but the it's... Neck uh, But the Danish, they are, they are doing a very, very good job. I think one of the, the exchange players is actually a forward because the forward's doing a very good job blocking them away at the last second, giving the goalkeepers those one or two seconds to breathe to... We have a nice little choir behind us there. So this uh, will be... A just witnessed quite possibly the Australian uh, women's choir <laughs> yeah but back into the game this uh, Amaga managed to get into the, the German half but Germany on the counter attack trying to get to the basket now very good situation there are players underneath the basket but she 
tries to score alone and doesn't get the ball down there and now the defenders in place again Duisburg really um, has to coordinate, it, coordinate their attacks better because they're usually lacking the player underneath the basket to ex execute. It's mostly an attack from one woman on the goalkeeper um, and the others are coming one or two seconds too late. They just receive the ball afterwards. They can carry it back out, but they can't execute uh, an actual attack in the basket. If you know that your opponent... Oh, okay, now you can see the defender is quite much out of air. Uh, and it's still five and a half minutes to go. If you know that your opponent uh, is just playing with seven players, you have to stick to the basket as much as possible and increase the pressure to the basket as much as you can. Get as much space around the basket as you can take. Make the life as horrible as possible around the basket. And don't let them break out. And here again we see Amaga trying to break out of their own half. And now they're back to the surface. And if you're a mugger, your best uh, opportunity to get your team to breathe is one player has to grab the ball, get to the surface and scrum it for as long as possible. Even if it's uh, ended by the referee at some point, you have to keep the ball in possession if you can. So they're, they're very disciplined in the defense, uh, amazing uh, with no exchange yeah. players. So Highly respectable uh, that they can keep uh, so off the defense for as long as possible without any triggers. Now we see... The German woman actually had the opportunity to grab the basket, but she didn't do it for some point. Yeah, the, the, the players... Uh, but we see the, the stamina. Y you now can see um, the, the exchange rhythms are getting yeah, are getting um, a bit uh, untimely. The defenders... Yeah, there is the okay. equalization. The you could see the when the, the discipline on the, on the defense uh, stop, and that is the only way to, to continue that. Then there's a chance, uh, and when the defender is not below the, the goal, this was the reason yeah. why this book scored. So it's now tie. And we can one see one it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's exactly those 15 minutes that take the toll away from the from the Danish team. Uh, and Germany, the Duisburg women um, clearly want to try to get possession of the ball as fast as possible again and attack as quickly as possible and from now on it's going to be very very tough for the Danish team because they have to score now or, or at least have keep it equal until the end of the game to get into, into penalty shootouts and so we'll see if they can manage to uh, actually uh, stay uh, on 1-1 one until the end of the half one because as you can see the attacks from these two women are now yeah they're getting more frequent, smarter, more frequent yeah. the passes uh, more precise so this uh, gives them some advantage uh, and uh, let's see how it continues uh, as long the Danish team is playing the, 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 the organized and uh, steady defense it will be difficult for this book they couldn't Danish teams could manage this in the uh, other games but uh, this time it's of course the clock is running yeah, and there against again, this, and, and then oh, oh there's almost, there's almost, there's almost there's a goal inside. They could Nadine barely defended. What is Nadine? Yeah, it was Nadine really took away the, the the goalkeeper, but she was not able to finish the move yeah. into the goal. But this gives higher yeah. pressure, but and yeah, there there is. was the goalkeeper not uh, deep enough on the goal, so the the in the backside was a little bit up and created the hole so now it's 2-1 uh, yeah, and so from now on it's going to be very difficult for them now, now it will it's, uh, the yeah, especially the second half the really second really half tough. and uh, the moral is uh, of course uh, uh, it's now hopefully not broken but uh, now you you feel I think yeah. the Danish team feels uh, and you can see there they get possession of the ball but they can't get it yeah. they can't, can't carry it over the middle line the Germans are very very strong on the ball they just exchanged they have rare they just had fresh players they can yeah. attack with full yeah. force and, and now it's yeah, getting now better now getting better the the, 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 the yeah. better in position and well now you can yeah. see that this book uh, take advantage so yeah. they, they could they're now managing the, the speed and I think uh, that that is uh, too exhausting yeah. for the Danish team to defend this, this in this proper 
way they did. Uh, uh, but we have to say, now. Uh, highly respectable of the Danish team to defend actually a, a zero yeah. one lead for approximately 10 to 12 minutes against uh, Duisburg that was constantly attacking the goal. They were never really breaking out into the opponent's half. Now the scrum is broken up by the referees. It's by the referee. Yeah. But I think it's for Amaga. Yeah, roughing the player by Duisburg. And Amaga keeps possession of the ball. We see them, they're actually trying to equalize. They're just not trying to keep possession of the ball. They have 35 seconds left in this half. So they will do everything to break through to the defense here of um, Duisburg and try to get one uh, scoring opportunity. But I think Duisburg is just scrumming the ball away up there in the corner. Try yeah, and they're, they're breaking out the again. They're, they're doing the forechecking with three girls, so yeah. it's, it's very impressive the performance of the Danish team. So it's uh, I, I had a training camp. Uh, this year with them and uh, with, the, with the national players and uh, so we have uh, the end of the first half yeah. high respect for the Danish te team yeah. for Amma so I'm, I'm be positive uh, in the on the performance and I hope that they also increase the performance until the world championship we uh, with the national team will have a training camp uh, with Denmark in June and uh, hopefully that, that will be a proper... Uh, uh I think it's quite training. sad that actually on a um, tournament like this here, Champions Cup, where you actually have the opportunity to play top level teams and apparently the, the, the women from Amaga just with seven players managed to get into the semi-finals so their, their team is really strong. So you wonder uh, what could have been if they have actually had five more exchange players if they could get into the game properly um, because quite frankly uh, it's just a whole nother game to to play if you have exchange players or not it's yeah of course that is of course uh, the basic uh, for 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 good game is a good physical condition and uh, on, on the last game on the on the first day it's uh, always difficult if you don't have exchange player that uh, you cannot uh, stand this uh, against the full team, but that is that's a part of the game. Yeah, that's yes. something that. Uh, so, Usu usually we have it. It's uh, November is usually the end of season for a lot of teams. So some players uh, are injured. Some players are getting sick uh, after the season finishes. So quite often um, teams in the Champions Cup can't come with their entire lineup of players. To have just seven players is really unfortunate for them, to be fair, because if you have at least one exchange player on every position, um, your chances of sustaining a defense uh, increases dramatically compared to having uh, no, most likely no exchange player for the defenders and for the goalkeepers, as far as I've seen. Yeah, that's, uh, but uh, sometimes you have given condition. Huh? So when I went uh, with the national team to to Helsinki, we had some some ladies which were pregnant, which is fortunate and good. But uh, at that moment, they cannot play, and some were ill. And then, uh, of course, uh, you start to make compromising. And if you start to make compromising, you saw that the men team, the Finnish team, has also some injured players. Some could not come, and something like that. So this has a big influence. Uh, of the team so mm. some of the key players uh, when you're missing them it's uh, it's a disaster yeah. and in the end it's just an amateur sport so you can never be sure to have your entire team uh, for every uh, tournament for every matchup so that is uh, that's a t the reason why sports team have a, a big group in the, 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 the list of the players uh, no? as better the, the exchange possibilities you have and you have alternatives uh, that's uh, much better that's a luxury part as a national coach because uh, usually you get those players you get those players they want uh, they're highly motivated in a club team uh, uh, sometimes uh, it's uh, always differ different you have to motivate them and find training yeah. things uh, I think less competition as, la as long as you come, you play. Uh, in the national team, it's different. So, 
I think it's quite difficult actually on a club level because quite often the starting 12 are mostly on the same level and then the players on number 13, 14, 15 spot or those who are coming in as ex exchange players um, who are most like new players or players that are not ex that experienced or didn't play as many tournaments with the, the core group. Um, there's quite a big difference um, in the level of um, competitive play they actually have. So you want to have the best 12 people in the water all the time. So you have five to six matches, seven matches if you're getting into the finals um, yeah. um, over the weekend. And at some point, uh, you have to use the best 12 you have. If you can, if you are fortunate enough to have three exchange players that you can actually use during an, a normal match, that have the same pace, and you can actually relax some of your key players and have the same level of competition, that is a luxury advantage that is incomparable to some. Yes. But for us, it's quite a problem actually um, that we know some players are not on the same level, and we want to give them playing time in the water, but it's quite difficult because some matches are really, really close. Yeah. So we have to keep the game as competitive as possible, and so they only get practice uh, in either uh, games against really strong teams where they mostly <laughs> won't manage to actually acquire the ball once or twice. So yeah, it's quite a tough decision actually to make, and it's on their own money. So they come here and they pay for yeah, themselves. Yeah, that so that is. So that's the reason why I I, I was uh, I think 2004 I trained the Duisburg team. Uh, and uh, brought them to the uh, German Championship uh, with a gold medal and uh, I prefer to be a national coach. That is uh, much less headache. It's enough headache, but... Uh, Alright, we're back to the game now and the Marga is getting the possession here uh, on the floor. Yeah, and uh, basically <laughs> uh, the, the, the picture changed, so they start to attack. They have the five minutes break. A good and they pass. actually have a good scoring position. There, there are two players yeah. underneath the basket. Uh, the attacker, but yeah, the ball drops down now. So the target's got to be to get the ball back as fast as possible to not let the Germans uh, get a fast uh, a fast break here through the pool. Try to keep the ball in the German on the German side, but these two girls do a pretty good job. They are now working their way forward into the half of the Danish, force them back into the defense. Yeah, and it's a pretty tough decision here um, for the Danish. I mean, if, if they take two, one or two more goals at some point, you uh, will have to go into energy saving mode and uh, try to get uh, try to get as much as possible for tomorrow for your last game at some yeah. point, I think. Because, yeah. There's so, Monica scored from the left, from the right side. There was an attack, but I could see that Heide was uh, more thinking than attacking. So how to grab the lady on the leg so this is too slow but uh, fortunately they, they keep the ball in their own position it's for one so basically yeah I think it's pretty much done here now for the, for yes the so that is uh, I think the, the the nail in the coffin is, is I would there. say when the Danish had would have more players this would be a really open game yes. But now they have to pay off uh, that they don't have exchange players. Mm -hmm. I have deep respect for the Danish performance and for the engagement into the game. But now it uh, it pays back, and uh, uh, luckily this book could play against uh, Denmark. I think that the other game. Yeah, Castoris. Uh, 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 sorry. Now that is yeah. uh, that would be much more tougher for this so this book is luckily to have the most easy yeah. competition they certainly have so drawn the easier way up to the but finals. that that means uh, this book is now on the way to the final they continue the game so now it's uh, the matter how they get into the rhythm but the danish team uh, still playing a very yep, good defense yeah. And they don't be afraid to make counter attacks, so they have a high moral uh, attitude, which is really impressive. Uh, the way and they are really disciplined in, in this uh, to follow this pressure. Um, so it, it took always a little bit too much time that the second Duisburg player 
goals in the scoring yeah, I position. Think I think it's very problematic for Duisburg, and they, if they want to go into the finals tomorrow and um, compete with Amaga, uh, with um, Akaren or Castores, who either wins the game uh, following this one, they really have to get uh, the position play up because uh, Akaren is always it's under the basket it's with amazing, three to four it's players. Amazing defense. Castores yeah. The same, so yeah, now amazing defense by by yeah, Amager they here. They're they're still they blocking the German woman. Yeah, they, they, they don't give up. The, the the goalkeepers pushed away and they they putting the hand on the ball and prevent this. Oh, yeah, we see penalty. now yeah. uh, a penalty throw. I could not I see, see why. why it's given. Oh, grip grip to the basket. Grip yeah. to the basket, holding the basket. So. Let's see who will do that. Uh, either it will be Ulla or it will be Marion. So let's see. I I I, I think it will be Marion uh, number nine. It looks like no, it's Monica number four. At this point in the game. Um if you ha get a penalty uh, as Duisburg, um, nice grip there actually on the neck, um, and she's a really good work of the Danish to keep the position actually there. Yeah, but now she's quite quite yeah, yeah, Moni a score. Well done. There. Monica, Monica is a black and white player. She either plays perfectly good or totally lousy. <laughs> There's nothing between. But uh, that uh, if she. That was surprised because from the, the the body attitude, I thought it was a uh, other player. But when she started to attack that, it was clear she at this she wanted to do that. At this point in the game, what you usually do if you're the team that's leading four to five uh, in score and you're there's pretty clear that you're going to win the game is you want to give as much um, opportunity to young and new players to get in-game experience of penalty scoring and penalty defense usually. You don't you don't know the age of Monica. <laughs> usually, usually, usually that's what you usually do. yes. Usually uh, that's what you want to do. But I don't want to talk about the age, but I know yeah. the age. And yeah. uh, I, I don't know. I don't know about this video right there. I mean, they want to score. I uh, would say as Monica possible. is uh, one of the experienced uh, yeah. players and. Uh, yeah. Well experienced and. Uh, but usually that's a, that, that's a good opportunity to give, um, even if you're behind um, six to six to seven scores or like it's now five zero uh, five one, you can. You there's basically no real reason to. I mean, you want to score, of course, but it's usually better to give experience to a player and to get him into the situation. Um, make basically, it yes. Yeah. But uh, please consider we are in front of the final. So now they want to most probably try all potential secure uh, uh, penalty shooters. So based on that, I think uh, it was a so it's Ola, a Ola, it's a Ola it's a tried and uh, Marion tried and uh, scored and Monica scored. So now they they have a clear. Uh, uh, experience into the pool into the competition so that is uh, what i think a good good decision from that's something actually that if uh, a coach sees it uh, a pass a fast pass uh, in front of the defender that's something you should never do actually always get body contact first and place the ball into the corner if you can but pass right in front of the chest of the defender is usually not a good idea because depends, you can depends you can on the speed on the pass, yeah. no? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Some teams are able to do this, and some teams are actually manage to perform it really well. But usually, uh, the safer way to get the the ball is ah, yeah. So you get a grip on the goalkeeper there, and you should put the ball in from the top. This was now an excellent pass uh, from uh, from the top down to Ulla, and Ulla could easily score. We have now six to one. It uh, becomes now more clear the result, and you see the the the, the only one girl sitting on the bench, and uh, again, great performance from Denmark with the numbers of players and uh, the discipline. They never get low, they never mm -hmm. lose their, their attitude. Oh, yeah. So this is holding, so that would be uh, against Denmark. Mm. 
So <laughs> we, have we know the game is very physical and we know Germany is using a lot of players into the forechecking and they're usually trying to attack as much as possible. But if you're a marker, your, your first and foremost priority is to keep the ball in, ball in your own ranks. That's basically the best way to e A, save energy, because you don't have to be on defense the entire time. And it also frustrates the opponents quite a lot if they know they should be the team uh, being on the advantage, being at the opponent's basket, but they still can't get the ball away from you. So that's... Yeah, I think it's now important to uh, to get self-confidence in the play uh, and for the game of tomorrow. So do not do too much mistakes, yep. make exact passing, uh, getting in and out. Uh, it's very. Also it's also very important to keep um, body posture and body language up, and to keep um, yourself in the same state of mind as you would be playing. That's that's what the Norwegians do very very well. Yeah. Even if they're 10, 12 points ahead, they will stay focused as much as they would be if it's a one-one game. Um, they will score. They will go in with the same efficiency. They will use the same amount of people, and they will tire themselves out just to keep the same um, state of mind for the next game. It's, it's, it's a problem if you're getting too sloppy and if you have an opponent that you can easily, easily beat and you go into the next game with the same body language, you will have a rough first minutes if, you, if you're not able to change your mindset yeah. uh, with, with the switch on, switch off. You could see in the, in the first, uh, first half, Duisburg yeah. was uh, were not cuts. able to do that. Now it's... Uh now they're getting into the game. And yeah. Actually, it's very nice. My nice uh, question about... Very, very good of a Margaret to actually keep the pressure up and to force them into attacking and to use their entire resources to into attacking the goal. Because what could basically happen is that the Margaret is just giving up the positions and then you can easily score. But here we see a Margaret is keeping up the defense. Okay, it was blocking the player. And it's against the Margaret. But they're keeping the defense up. And they're forcing Duisburg into positioning well, getting a grip of, mm, of the goalkeeper from above, and executing their attacks as well as they can. And they're doing a really good job of de defending them away, actually. It's not uh, three and a half minutes left in the game, and they're still uh, always on the basket. It appears like they're, they're actually having uh, a more solid defense than they had at the, in at the end of the first half. But no, yeah, they're, they're, they're more concentrated, but uh, of course they have also no chance to go away and yeah. uh, they, they, they have not uh, getting really the hand on the ball. So, so here the Duisburg is really controlling, keep the pressure high, mm -hmm. making the passing now too slow. So if Sabine changing the sides. So... Okay, you have a 6-1 lead. Uh, you At have some point, you will say three resources. minutes. So, so it's they're controlling the game. Uh, so nothing is burning for for this book. They're, they're leading 6-1. They will be in the final tomorrow. So well the honestly. Yeah, I'm still missing. I mean, they keep going in. They're trying to take the ball more above and apply pressure. And now they actually get the opportunity to take away the basket from the defender. But I'm still missing those key players uh, alongside of the goal um, to give a pass to, to give actually a good scoring opportunity to. Most of the goals in the second half were one-on-one -on -one situation um, on the goalkeeper, where they actually just pulled them away and uh, put the ball in because the attackers from above couldn't reach them fast enough and carry them away. But against the team um, that is uh, on full resources, usually the attackers will be in position and will try to prevent you from attacking from the top. So you have to have those players in scoring positions under the basket like you do right have right now, um, creating those opportunities for those other players, uh, drawing the the, attack the attackers in the forwards um, above the above the uh, the goalkeeper and um, creating those empty spaces underneath the basket. So I'm really interested to see if they can change it tomorrow um, in their final okay, game. Okay, penalty again. Most probably again holding the basket. 
holding the basket announced uh, and take uh, blue take a timeout so now it's the question who will go and make it most probably I think will they go at it again with uh, full experience or will they give it to a younger player no I guess it will be most probably Ulla if I would be the coach the national team it's uh, that uh, I decide uh, who will throw that uh, I will not make the decision to the, the girls uh, I decide who will do that uh, of course uh, in advance we, we nominate the potential players but uh, I consider from the and taking away the responsibility of the girl and give them not option to choose uh, was until now quite successful but it's always a question uh, normally candidate is Ulla, uh, Marion, Monica, Nadine uh, in, this, uh, in this game uh, but I cannot see who is this so that's attack. Ah, we would love to have a picture underwater. Hello, please give, give us full vision on the water. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so she this was number seven. Number seven of this book. It's Katrina von Einem. Oh, can't, can't, oh, Katja did this. Oh, so let they let Willy uh, give uh, different players opportunity. So impressive. So that somehow I would say preparation for uh, tomorrow. There, I think that's good. I think it's good, 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 if good you choice. If you're up, uh, up on a hard game, and uh, it might be possible. Very well done here by Duisburg to sustain the game now. 7-1, but really, really impressive by Amaga to keep the score actually at 7-1 with one exchange player. The first half was really impressive. Uh, they executed nearly perfectly at the basket. Um, they scored very early with a quick counter attack as they intended. Um, so congratulations to the Danish team and we actually hope to see them with a full team the next time they play. So yeah. to have because as they played right now, they they could be a top contender actually. I mean, they obviously have the strength to do so with seven players to compete. So yeah, good luck to them. And I think they'll get a good night's sleep now <laughs> and prepare for tomorrow because yeah. this day uh, most likely took really took a toll of them. Yeah, and well done for Duisburg. They are now our first uh, female uh, contenders in, in, the f in the finale. And I think the next game will decide who's going to be their um, Akan in blue and Castoris uh, in white. So, ladies and gentlemen, so I'll leave you for today. So, here you see you tomorrow and enjoy the next game. I will find someone who will replace me. I think I'll be staying for one or two more games. Let's okay. See who's coming in for, for you? Are you coming in, Deborah?
Hello, Dan Rolton here. It looks like the clock is ticking down to a semi-final between Akron and Castores. This will be a contest between the smaller players in terms of weight and stature uh, against the very tall Akron women. It'll be interesting to see how well Castores could cope with the size of yeah. the Akron players. I think it, it would be a classic uh, match of Norway versus uh, Colombia, like speed versus uh, physicality and strength. Where, as you can say, that Norway isn't fast because they're really they're fast. They're very well. fast. But they're usually uh, going in strong and using uh, the strength to their advantage, whereas uh, with the Colombians, they, they are strong as well, but they are usually uh, very, very lighter and a bit smaller. So they're using like um, pins and needle tactics where they go in uh, fast and very often with high repetition and having four to five players on the water all the time, um, stressing you uh, on a very high level. Um, uh, making the, the space very, very thin for the defenders to get back into position um, and just stressing defense out as much, much as possible to create uh, opportunities for them. So yeah, it will be a very interesting game. I think Amago is in very good shape. I think Casoros is in very good shape as well. So um, we'll see who can take the better of the other team. Yes. The average age of the uh, Akron women players is your guess? Mm. Average age. Uh, I haven't seen the entire team. I've seen some uh, younger players. I've seen some older players. I'd, I'd say it's uh, around 35. 38. 38. Yeah. I think Castores will be around 22, something like that. They're usually uh, way younger than, uh, than. They have some older players as well, but I'm sure they are younger. Are there some of the under 21 players uh, of Colombia playing for Castores here? Because the under one or twenty, under one I don't think so. Actually, really, it was I don't. Th I think they had one, but she didn't. She couldn't make it because she had studies. Okay. And she couldn't arrange. But the Colombian U21 team was fairly balanced. They had players from different clubs around Colombia. It wasn't just Orcas. And someone said to me, Orcas doesn't have that many juniors, really. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Pacho. The coach, he's quite experienced. I don't, I don't think he's interested in just having Orcas players anyway. That's mm -hmm. He wants to win. Yeah. Get the best players for the, for the team. Uh, yeah. Usually when it comes to national teams, the decision... Um, uh, the club only comes to consider consideration when the decision between two players on the position is very close. And you have two players to play in the same club usually you have to take the ones playing in the same club because they have more experience playing together and they are usually um, better coordinated in the water mm -hmm. whereas uh, which is the biggest problem of a national team uh, most times is to coordinate the team uh, as well as possible so that's when the club level comes into co consideration for me um, but usually if one player is sticking out you take the better player that's very clear yes but a player that fits the team better actually you want to have a very high speed team you usually take the players that can keep up with the pace whereas uh, if you have a very strength-based team, you should take the players to uh, uh, complete the team as, as much as possible. And also, if you're going to be dependent on ball control and not yeah. losing the ball, then you want players who are mature and have good uh, understanding of the game. Whereas, if you're going to play more dynamically, maybe a faster player has less experience but can punch through and score a goal yeah. for you, that will be the help that you need psychologically to succeed at the competition. So, as you say, it's a it's choice and